Now, here we are on Monday. We've navigated the weekend. And it seems like I, it seems like only two days since I saw Pat McCart with our last. And in fact, it was two days. Are you, yeah. Pat? <laughs> I'm glad, Jude. Uh, it's, right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine soft day here. Actually, uh, bling, uh, bling and cold at first. In fact, you might notice, Jude, my attire has changed somewhat. I've well, my, mine too. Do you not uh, you know my, see my fetching shirt? <laughs> My uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 20 year old young summer has been t shirts and whatever, but yeah, today yeah. it's changed. Yeah, it's sort of sad to see it go, but the way I was content myself, Pat, is uh, I was say I was doing a calculation and it's only about 11 weeks until we the days start getting longer again. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> I remember when I was a young fellow, Judy, this man said it was September, he said, Ah, it's only three months to Christmas. <laughs> I think, no, that's, that's just right in the corner. Sure, I tell you October. one thing. If you didn't have to go back to boarding school like St. Columns, nothing, you know, the seasons, yeah. no season holds any real threat or depression <laughs> uh, if you don't have to go back to boarding school. God, uh, I used to, the word September used to put a chill in my right guts. The LED, uh, thought yeah. of it. Anyway, anyway let's, yes. let's turn to matters of state, affairs of state. Now, the big thing is getting the headlines everywhere, I think, and it certainly was in the Irish Times this morning, is this thing called the Pandora Pandora Papers. I'm yeah. assuming it's, it wasn't explained to me in the article I read, but uh, I'm assuming that it's called the Pandora Papers because the idea of Pandora's box out of which- That's exactly what it's, exactly, that's exactly um, what it's called. Yeah. But uh, I think you're more across one, it's got to do with a shell company. Um, so maybe could you tell us what a shell company is? <laughs> Because I don't quite know. If you're asking me for the legal thing, all, all I'm saying is a shell company is a front company. It's usually it's set up, my understanding of it, uh, Pat McGart and Jude Collins are solicitors and somewhere or other. We would, we would uh, send our names to saying, we call ourselves Collins McGart Limited and so on. And we, and we, put, uh, we, put in, and we buy a company uh, or a property for somebody at 8 million. Uh, and it's it's Collins McGart's names on it and yeah. so on and so on shell company but behind the scenes we really don't own it and there's probably f fake names and so on uh, everywhere now somewhere that you have to squirrel through you will eventually find the owner but it's all front companies to keep the rich and the famous and they're it's all tax dodges you know, uh, mm -hmm. and so that they don't get caught for tax so the, the thing about it is I think there's this time the the previous one was called the Panama Papers Mm. Because they, they all came out of Panama, which was a sort of a tax bolt tool for the yeah. rich and the famous. This one, as you say, it's a Pandora's box, I think, for sure. Saying, Jude, apparently there are literally millions of documents, and they've been sent to what is it, 600 journalists in 117 countries Irish Times over here, The Guardian, and uh, the BBC in Britain, The Washington Post in America. And I'm like, I'm presuming the rest, you can pick and choose the rest mm -hmm. of them. But uh, you know, it's all hey, Jude, there was a great story on this morning. It, it, it probably sums it up well. Uh, a guy from The Guardian was on RT this morning, and he told the story. He was following up one particular thing in uh, Monaco, and he went to his apartment, and it turns out. There's a wee Russian girl, he says, who is a former cleaner. Hmm. And she's living in this apartment, apparently, that's worth something like 10 million. Looks out, you know, Monaco, the, the price of property there. Mm -hmm. This one is a prime location on the shore front or the bay front, whatever the hell you call it. And anyway, she also apparently owns a yacht. Turns out that she is the former lover, mistress, call it what you will, of um, Vladimir Putin. And apparently this farmer cleaner, she, she met Putin somewhere and apparently they have a child somewhere together along the way. And I know uh, she is worth, uh, they reckon, about 100 million. They reckon Putin is so wealthy that he's a billionaire, billionaire, but you will never, ever find his name or anything. They, uh, apparently he had a friend, he grew up with this guy somewhere in Russia, uh, this, the same guy told us, he's a butcher mm. and he travels, he, tra he only owns, owns a Toyota and he travels economy class. But apparently his name's on literally 50, 100 uh, companies. But they reckon he he's the front man for, um, for Putin. So this this Pandora's uh, Papers is, is uh, I gather then, uh, a hugely wide-ranging assortment of documents involving any number of people in any number of countries where they have a yeah. sort of a shell 
a shell company where their names on it, but or somebody's names on it, but it's it's right. really well, hiding their Tony, wealth. Tony, that Tony, Tony Blair, Tony and Sherry Blair bought uh, some property in the middle of London, hmm. and uh, they avoided some like three hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, um, Nobody would buy a property. What do you, you pay? Uh, you pay a sort of property thing on on top of it. I can't remember the name exact name. Mm. Anyway, uh, bottom line of it all, they they bought the shell company, and that meant they didn't have to pay that owned the house. They bought the shell company, so they avoided three hundred fifty thousand um, sort of additional tax. Well, you you know, and this this thing, this a farmer labour prime minister, and the, the, their their explanation is this is how the sell, the vendor wanted to do it. Uh, but it was very very convenient that they could buy a property. And by the way, isn't it brilliant that a, no. a prime minister is so well off, a Labour prime minister, that he can afford to buy something at five point four million? Well, 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 well. I that's a that's a difficult one because if you were to disqualify all the Labour politicians on the grounds of much money they had, there wouldn't right. be not many of them. But right. um, I I have mixed feelings about this now. The, the Irish Times made quite a hoo ha of it because one of right. these. Shell companies have an office or has an office, an empty office in Dublin, yeah, I think. Dublin. Yeah. But um, if, if it's what you say that it's got to do with tax, essentially tax evasion of one yeah. kind or another, and hiding wealth, ah, or hiding wealth. Yeah. I, I, on the face of it, I can't see anything wrong with that. I, I don't see what laws been brought. Is it the I? What my investigation no, 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 didn't no, tell no, me no, anything I, about a law on, being broken. It, it's it's it told a, me about on, secrecy. To, and right, it told me about right. hiding stuff, but it yeah, didn't say uh, right. any of it was breaking the law. No, no, and it might it might not be breaking the law, but there, uh, but, uh, but there is a considerable amount of law breaking, dude. We, uh, there's a two tier system. The pay P A Y E worker uh, right. pays his tax at, right. at going yeah, rate and has that. no room yeah. to maneuver. Hmm. These guys can buy yachts and buy apartments and hide things and write them off and tax and so on and and so of all the big big play things. Uh, you know, uh, we we get we get caught for all this. Look, I these, these, I, no, that's it. Hold on, hold on a minute. Right, the, the prime minister of Czechoslovakia or the president—I don't know what the term is. Yes, aware. yes, I saw he, he, he didn't tell anybody that he owns a twenty-two million. Twenty-two uh, million, uh, yeah. Uh, and he's he he went to election uh, saying about uh, that he was going to clean up corruption and, and correct, tax correct. avoidance. Right. Yeah. The king uh, of and Jordan tax, uh, and tax evasion too. Tax evasion. And tax evasion. Yes. Right, yes. The, same... the king of Jordan that, during hmm. the Arab Spring of what three or four years ago, there were uh, protests on the streets about poor pay and unemployment. Hmm. The, hmm. But the, the king of Jordan didn't tell them that he bought three, uh, uh, and ma three massive apartment properties or whatever you like to call them on Malibu Beach for someone like hmm. 60, 70 million quid. You know, well, the, uh, I, I, I know, I can see, I know what you're saying. And uh, certainly the world is ill divided. There are those that are super rich. I mean, obscenely rich, like yeah. the Facebook guy and uh, Jeff Bezos and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if I had, supposing I had a bunch of money, um, or you had a bunch of money, yeah. would you be looking ways to pay taxes on it? Or would you be looking for ways not to pay taxes on it? I would be wait, looking for ways not to pay taxes. I, dude, fair enough. And I, there's a certain, you're absolutely. But hey, if you go to an electorate like the guy in um, yes. Czechoslovakia, I, I, that's if you're I a runner in yeah. Jordan where the people yeah. are, where a few people are in poverty and you're letting on, if you're Tony Blair, who's a socialist, uh, a Labour Party leader, and you know you, you get uh, taxed a uh, nice, dude, it's uh, uh, basically it's um, a two-tier system, as I've said earlier, whereby those who are at, at the top uh, and it's the rich and the famous and the, the powerful who can avoid this sort of tax. But I remember the one, was it Leona Helmsley or something? Only the little people pay taxes. Well, Jude, uh, those, uh, those little people provide the roads, the services, the water services, the uh, everything that uh, those rich yeah. people use as well. I mean, essentially, Pat, I think you're, 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 you're right um, to point out that there's a terrible discrepancy between uh, the, the, the level at which the rich live and the level at which the, the rest of us live. But um, I still would say that uh, if they're trying to avoid paying tax on their wealth, I, I can understand that. I mean, except they were very uh, philanthropic, they, they, yeah. wouldn't, they wouldn't be saying, here, I give this money away, or, oh, yeah, I'll pay the taxes, or any other taxes you'd like me to pay, no chance. And I wouldn't do it either. So well, I would ask, um, like this guy, Babis, the Czech prime minister, he were, uh, ran on a 
a sort of a, a promise of cracking down on tax down evasion. On corruption and, and tax evasion. So yeah. that 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 I think definitely deserves uh, punishment because he's saying we go. I'm I'm the guy that will avoid tax evasion by people, and then he goes and he engages yeah. in tax evasion. It's like the Tory Party being the the family the family oriented party, yeah, yeah, and the next yeah. minute you find half of them are jumping into bed with their neighbours' wives uh, or yeah. or husbands. Um, but I think where uh, guys are finding ways to not tell people how much they have. You remember the old joke about the guy that said yeah. he, he was in telling the priest his sins, but he wasn't telling them his business. Uh, uh, exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, that's kind of understandable. You might want everybody to know. And in my experience, people won't, or very rarely will tell me how much they earn a year. No, but uh, Jude, right, uh, yeah, and I agree. Look, Jude, I'm, there's a certain part, if I earn me money and I can avoid tax rate, fair enough, but Jude, there apparently, um, uh, as far as I remember reading this morning, there are 800 uh, companies registered, shell companies registered, no, just fake names yeah. in that office in Dublin, which is yeah. an empty office, by the way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's all, all secrecy. I am saying it's very simple. There Surely there should be an onus on uh, the Dublin government, the London government, the Washington government to say, come on, we're going to enter just a system whereby the same rules apply. So, Jude, the, 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 these, these tax dodges have been designed by the rich for the rich mm. uh, to benefit the rich. Yes, but you see, I think they that. should. Yeah, but I think they should. I, you were touching on it there. I think the governments in these all these various companies they should come to an agreement, just like with regard to they said uh, uh, the corporation tax should be a common yeah. thing, so you catch people like Facebook and Apple and so on. Yeah, uh, right. I I absolutely would point the finger of accusation at governments and say, listen, there's a system that allows guys to squirrel away tons of money and not pay tax on it. Change it, but. Yeah. If, it, if I was one of those guys and that hadn't been changed, I would use the same thing. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I know it would be selfish, but that's the way the world works. But the job of government is to close the loopholes, to make yeah. it impossible to have tax evasion. So they should be yeah. they should be saying we're the ones to blame rather than going on too much about oh look at these billionaires, aren't they horrible the way they're saving all yeah. this money and avoiding tax? Yeah. I agree, I agree, I agree. Uh, I, you know, but that, that's really, but you, you see, I think uh, apparently, and like I am not 100%, I just read somewhere that there are literally millions of documents this time uh, yeah. and that uh, these journalists, uh, the, what is the 600 journalists uh, have been working on them. Like, mm. It's only starting away. Now, the, the Panama Papers led to a film starring Meryl Streep, which was quite good, uh, <laughs> you, you know, uh, uh, but you, that's, no, but it's the whole thing, Jude, that it's all, you know, the hypocrisy, the secrecy that, you know, and the double standards. That's, I think, the, really what they're saying, that, you know, you're all getting people like Trump letting on he was working for the little people. Boris Johnson letting on he's working for the little people. Tony Blair letting on he's working for the little people. And these guys having yachts, what the, the, those who have yachts and those who have not, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would expect no more from them. Uh, I assume that all of them, again, it's like this, people go on about the, for example, the clergy, the Catholic Church and the corruption and sexual abuse and yeah. so on. I, I mean, I, that doesn't, doesn't shock me at all because it's human nature. That's human nature. That's the way people are. People do horrible yeah. things. Humanity has done horrible things from the, the day one uh, yeah. since Cain killed Abel. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you, you, what you've tried to do in civilization is to set up frameworks where the bad is punished and the good is rewarded. And you don't leave people the opportunity to do things that add to injustice. Yeah. But as long as the state set, sets up stuff a certain way, I think people are right to take a veil off or to avail themselves of an opportunity to not pass the government the money. I'll tell you one thing. Here's a reason. If I suppose I had 10 million pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I didn't want to pay tax on it. I would justify it by this. I would say, if I pay all the tax that these buggers want me to pay, a lot of that will be going to making nuclear weapons, to yes. sustaining the army, to keeping the royal family in, in the state that they're accustomed to. So take that bit off for me. <laughs> That's the reason I'm not letting you ask. Yeah. Uh, yeah but, Nobody, you know, cynical? That, that, that's very hey, because the very people who are worth 10 billion i'm damn sure they'll be supporting the the, the british royal family and the armaments industry i don't think it's, hey, Jude, i've never found too many left-leaning billionaires 
No, no, that's true. That's true. Uh, anyway, uh, I, it's hard to know. Hard to know. Um, uh, I, I work from the assumption that, that they're all um, very selfish people. Jude, let's be honest. Here's all the bottom line of all this. Uh, Jude, it's a scam for the rich, and they're getting away for it. And uh, we all but, know it. And, well, and, they get away with because there isn't a law, Pat. They get away with because there isn't a law. Exactly. Jude, you know, the, the, the world has become global, but the mm. laws have not been globalised. Uh, well, they want to get their skits on, I think, uh, uh, rather than be uh, totting at these guys, you know, using yeah. all these loopholes. Okay, let's let's okay. leave the stinking rich. They don't deserve our attention any longer than what we've given them. Um, let's talk about something wholesome like the Tory conference, which oh, is currently God. on. <laughs> yeah. The sweet yeah. smell of success. And no less a man than a frosty Lord, <laughs> Lord Frost, is yeah. holding forth. And he is saying, look at me, I'm tough. I'm going to sort these EU yeah. people. Yeah. And he says, the UK cannot wait forever for the yeah. EU to come up with a solution to the terrible problem of the protocol. Yeah. Uh, he's a fine man, Lord Frost, wouldn't you say? Well, 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 <laughs> Jed, I, re I read last week that uh, was, uh, they had a meeting with the, um, you know, the Northern Ireland business leaders last week. Yeah, and, you know, there was a very different tone came out of the leaders. They were basically saying, "Leave the protocol alone." If you mm -hmm. uh, unilaterally uh, invoke Article Sixteen, it will not change one tra and trader into Northern Ireland. It actually could turn ser uh, several people or firms off because they'll say, "What is the legal position?" And yeah. thirdly, it's going to create more difficulty. A lot of people in Europe simply say, "Hey, we're we're not going to take stuff from Northern Ireland because this is starting to get too complicated." That's right. You know, right. Uh, you know. So th they're saying. So I, I and Jude, it's the politicians who are who are wanting the change. I get the distinct impression reading that report last week that the business people would prefer they would bugger off uh, and just leave it leave it alone. Jude, mm -hmm. we were chatting on uh, well on Saturday as opposed to Friday <laughs> last last week about the fact that there's a 5 something growth rate for Northern Ireland predicted this coming year, which is about what, three times the growth rate per, predicted for the mainland. So who's doing badly here? Yeah, uh, I, I, I noticed that, that uh, uh, they, although they didn't say in the paper when I read the report, <coughs> excuse me, they didn't say who these business people were, just said a group of business people from the North went over. And they yeah. certainly laid it on the line. They said they were. It's not going to help us, you know. No. You messing around with the protocol, uh, and you're going to put off people who otherwise would be trading. And you can see that makes perfect sense. But uh, Frost is saying that um, they he won't be dumping. He has told people from here that he won't be dumping the uh, protocol. He'll be just making sure that it's uh, working well and so on. So uh, Jeff, uh, one... uh, Jeffrey's singing from that hum sheet as well. He's because he, of course he has put the uh, what he call it the uh, Russian roulette into play that he's going mm. to pull the trigger at the end of this month if he doesn't get his own way. Right. But, but I heard today he says uh, uh, our strategy is working. He says because we have, oh, act, we have got the attention of the EU and we have got the attention of the British government and we've got attention even of the Irish government that, <laughs> and they are now taking our complaints seriously. Hey, do you know what he's uh, like? Do you know what he's like? He's like the rooster. The crowed and said he, but it was his crowing that got the sun to come up every morning. Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah. it makes about as much sense. Uh, uh, well, uh, no, but you know, someone the, the uh, crumbs and the trail have been led. Well, oh, look, when, when they get some sort of you know minor concession, they're going to say, Look, we, we've succeeded. Ah, that's it, that's it. Um, and you see, he and uh, Frost has said, Oh, we can't wait forever. Well, if you yeah. look, there's a report, um, Secretary, or whatever his name is has said and uh, within 10 days, they'll be putting forward their, their uh, suggestions for working this thing better. He knows bloody well that they're coming up with, a, with a, their view on things. And right. uh, he pretends that they're sitting tight and not doing anything. I, I mean, mean really put, put this much, you know, I love the arrogance of the Brits. They created this problem. They should mm. come up with a solution. <laughs> you know, it's, it's up to the EU. They're, they're, the arrogance is as, as a, as sort of uh, off the scale here. Yeah, the, first of all, they went with Brexit. Then they signed the protocol, and they're now saying to Europe, "You come up with a solution to it." That's right. That's right. You have to admire, uh, you know, sort of admire brazenness of that. Scale. I know, you know, I, you know, you know, a a a a tire off a JCB could bounce off his neck, no bother. You know, uh, they talk about a brass neck. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Now, anyway, I, I, I'll now make a prediction that the protocol will be in place in a year's time, two years' time, three years' time, but there'll be some sort of window dressing done, some sort of okay. minor adjustment well, that will be that hailed by yeah. Jeffrey as being all his own work and a massive change. And Frost will be saying, oh, did you see what Frost said, incidentally? <laughs> some of no, the, the like language he used one. was just hilarious. He says, this is the beginning of a great voyage for our country. Yes, there will be some rough waters along the way. Uh, yeah. But we will, choose, we will choose for ourselves how to steer the ship. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, you just kind of like me saying, I will choose how to steer this spaceship. Or yeah. give, me a, give me a plane and I'll, say, I'll show you. Uh, straight, straight, straight under the Twin Towers. Uh, uh, what, you know, uh, but Judy, I, uh, by the way, this is the new strategy. I heard, I only caught the tail end of Boris Johnson on with uh, your man, Andrew Murray, yesterday morning. And he's saying, you know, there will be choppy waters and we will sort it all out. This is the new strategy. Like, in other words, I, it hasn't been one massive balls up since the 1st of January, you know, uh, and it's, it's trying to tell, we will sort this out and all the rest. Jude, it's been a disaster so far. So how's it going for you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, although I, I, it doesn't uh, pay to be too uh, deeply engaged in schadenfreude because uh, I see where Michal Martin, although we're not scheduled to talk about this, but Michal Martin has got things into a state where housing will be in an awful state uh, this winter. And what's more, the lights may go out. Well, the Irish government, now they're saying uh, they can bring, on, bring them back on board some of the old uh, stations, the power stations that they've knocked off, off red. Well, that's true, that's another matter. Like there's one good word goes on uh, uh, Pete. Uh, Pete uh, uh -huh. uh, but like, did they, have they cut enough turf, turf even to start using it again? Oh, that's but, the, 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 but the other thing as well, Jude, is uh, apparently uh, there's a couple of data centres, I think there's one somewhere in oh, North yeah. Donegal here, that, yeah. but apparently they use as much electricity as a, a city the size of Kilkenny, each one of them. Mm. And there's two or three uh, uh, coming on board, plus the fact that your favourite subject, seeing that you bought one, electric cars, you know, they're, they're, they're starting to play a part in the over usage, you know, and which, by the way, I take it it wasn't planned for that, that all these people like you good environmentalists plugging mm. your cars on at night. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, I wonder what, how you deal with that. As I understood it, these data centers, uh, which were soaking up electricity, uh, were part of the big, uh, you know, foreign direct investment, Facebook, Google and yeah. so on. Now, it's a tricky one, that, because they, they, you'll have to supply the kind of stuff, the amount of power that Facebook or Google or Amazon or whatever needs in Ireland yeah. in the South. Yeah. You've got to do that because there's so many jobs depending yeah, on that. Uh, absolutely. But on the other hand, you sure can't... No, the, no, last week, what we were talking about, the 15.6 per uh, uh, GBD, uh, GDP predicted growth for the coming year, mm. well, mm. that's based on... Uh, Supporting the multinationals. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I just hope that that works out. Anyway, we, we said we weren't going to talk about that. Yeah. I want to talk a wee bit about um, what, what your view is. Well, we talked about Sarah Everard, that poor woman yeah. that was abducted and raped and killed. Um, and jo we're not the only ones that was expressing sympathy about it. Boris Johnson was totally disgusted and, you know, we have to sort this mm -hmm. out and the police will have to be governed and so on. And there's a group of re representing victims from here who will travel to Westminster on the 19th of October. Uh, and they're gonna meet with political leaders in the opposition, um, in their opposition to UK government proposals to end prosecutions for troubles era crimes. Yeah. And they cite the case of one, Cathy. I, it's an awful thing, but I'd never heard of the poor woman. A no. woman about 30 years ago, Cathy McIlvenny, um, uh, her sister, her sister Lorraine McCausland, was 23 at the time, and yeah. she was in a she was in a loyalist drinking. I was going to say den, but you know, center. Let's say, yeah. and she was uh, beaten, raped, and murdered, mm. and nobody has you know done mm. a single thing about it. So isn't yeah. it all the way we are that uh, we allow some things and say, oh well, that's okay, but no, yeah. we get very head up, selective indignation. Yeah. I would, you know, stood up. I would love to see Boris Johnson uh, last week turning around to the Everard family and saying, "Look, 
forget about it. We need to put the past behind us and that's you know, and so on. That's basically what he's telling a lot of families in Northern Ireland. And I think there's some sort of thing that, uh, you know, there, there's almost a sort of, what would you like to call it? Dude? Some sort of inverse racism. Actually, mm. they're used to that over there, you know, and that's, that's just exactly the way. You've you hit yeah. the nail on the head, Pat. You've hit yeah, the nail yeah. on the head. That's what makes it different. It's over here. Yeah. And as everybody yeah. knows, I'm, I'm doing, <laughs> for my sins, I'm waiting through a book by Seamus Dean, um, a collection of his stuff, the last, I think, uh, collection of his uh, works was after he died. And um, he, he talks a lot, and several of the articles are very hard to understand. He's a very dense writer, but yeah. he talks about the way that the English personify the Irish, the way they sort of present them. And yeah. essentially what they are presenting them as is barbarians, yeah. you know, right down through history. So it's a modified form of the barbarian. We yeah. are, I mean, look, where else would have people killing each other for their religion? Uh, well, so we go in and we try to get them to... Do, do, do you look at the punch cartoons of the 1800s? Jesus, mm. dude, they were downright racist from, you mm. know, start to finish. You know, and, you, you know, you seem, to, you seem to ignore the fact that we have produced a hell of a lot of writers and all the rest. But according to them, everybody had pigs in the kitchen. That was yeah. the, the, the depiction. Yeah, yeah. I, but that, that exists today still. Uh, That's I mean, what I mean, yeah. Yeah, so it's one thing to have it in the 18th century, but to have it now. In any case, I good luck to those people. I hope they get yeah. some degree of uh, justice. Although there is a part of me that says, oh, God, you know, they won't. They won't. And it's no, a waste did, time. Well, was, well, I did, what is it? Was back in July, Brandon Lewis sort of said there'd be a statute of limitations uh. on all crimes. And, and even civil cases, everything's going to be on up until, what, 1998? So in other yeah. words, and that, dude, that the, the the only and the the only aim of that was to take the British state as a player and the troubles out of it. That's yeah. exactly what that's about. Because sure. uh, you know there was no the British state weren't involved, in, and mm -hmm. it's as simple and as, as cynical as that. But mm -hmm. by the way, dude, the only thing is, as somebody pointed out, I can't even remember who it was. It's the only time in the history, not even the Good Friday Agreement, but you know, a uniformity of agreement. But uh, this amnesty for British troops and for the, the people of the troubles has united every party. That they're all opposed to it. And I think it's said 10 or 12 American congressmen and senators have signed a thing opposing it as well. Jude, uh, you, you know, so here, back to the, just a finishing the point, if Boris Johnson went to the British people to uh, the, the, see the Sarah ever, let's put it behind us, forget about justice for the, ever for that wee girl and her family. Do you, what do you think would happen in the morning? Uh, it'll be hell to pay. Uh, he, yeah. wouldn't, he wouldn't even dream. That's, but, that's, that. but that's what he's saying to the families over here. Oh, of course it is. But at the same time, you have to, to be realistic about it. Given the fact that it's so long ago, and given the fact that the one thing, and it may not be the case with that woman, Lorraine McCausland, but there are all yeah. sorts of other ones like Pat Van Nugan and so on, yeah. there's going to be a trail which will lead to Downing Street. That's yeah, not a bit about the voice of somebody to Downing absolutely. Street. Do yeah. you think that they're going to allow that to be a bit? Not a chance. We know not that. A chance, happen. No. So, on the one hand, you want justice for all these people. And you admire their fighting spirit, keeps the flame alive. I mean, the Vanuken yeah. family are amazing in that respect. But yeah. also, on the other hand, you have to say, what is the point? It's not going to happen. It's not no. going to happen. The British are not. I, but uh, you know, I, I think, Jude, if, if I was Pat Finnegan's sons and his wife, I'd be duty bound. It was, it was horrendous what happened to him. The state was up to its eyeballs in it. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, They've uh, what call, stonewalled every inquiry and so on. The, the family know it, and for them to walk away would be sort of tantamount to saying, "Look, we know what happened, and we're going to do nothing about it." Like the, I'd say, they're a very smart family. I presume they know this, they, and they know probably know better than me and you because a lot of them are lawyers. That, that that it's never going to happen, but they owe it. They're duty bound to their father to do it. Yeah, to keep on battering at a door that yeah, you're not going to open. Because, Jude, you know, at least it's... Aye, but, Jude, why are people like me and you talking about it? Because they, they're exposing the double standards, the cynicism, and the absolute hypocrisy of a lot of what goes on here. Well, we need to you sort of be clear in that and say that every time they beat on the door, that's another testimony to this uh, corruption, really, at the heart of yeah, government, yeah. Uh, to deny yeah. lethal deeds. But they say, yeah. even Pat Finucane's family was to get justice. Even they were to come clean on the whole thing. Yeah. They still have literally dozens of cases where the British state's involved. 
uh, you know, that are not going to be coming to. Well, I, I, I come back every time to, to the Glen Ann gang. Um, mm. And Cad Waller and uh, some, and yeah. uh, I think, was it, uh, well, it was with the Pat Confinnick and Centre, I'm not quite sure who was involved in it. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, 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 it's forensic what they have done. You yeah. know, the statements, fingerprints, they've gone through everything under the sun and they have mm. cross referenced and all the rest. Of, dude, the state was up to its eyeballs. Yeah. And, and there, there is no way they can sort of walk away and say we weren't. Oh, but they will, Pat. They will. Oh, they yeah. Will. But, uh, my, but the point is, people like me and you don't believe it, and a growing number of other people. Dude, for years, you know the old one that uh, he said to uh, Lord, what, what the original, Woodry, we're not only fighting a war, we're fighting a propaganda war. Mm -hmm, Dude, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they got away with that sort of one for a long time, you know, the spin they put but a, an increasing number of people are now sort of saying uh, they're exposed. Jude, why do you think the uh, years ago uh, Sinn Féin was anathema? And I think a lot of people are now trying to say, hey, a lot of what the Republicans say are actually turned out to be true. They know the claims for years they were the only player and they were the only evil ones. That, that their claim, wait a minute, this was, uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't, wasn't black and white. There was a hell of a lot of grey. I think a lot of people are actually getting, getting that message. Yeah, uh, on a sort of a lighter note in that, for years during the Troubles, um, the claim always was made by the SDLP that there was a lot of personation going on at, uh, you know, elections. Mm -hmm. At Sinn Féin, yeah. Republicans were, you know, voting five times, voting early and voting often. Well, apparently then when, when uh, the research was done and looked at this uh, during the course of the Troubles, it appeared that it was to the advantage of SDLP people. So the yeah. conclusion was that maybe it was SDLP supporters who were engaged in <laughs> double voting. So uh, actually, see, a, it's along the guy uh, you begin to say, well, you, geez, as you say, like uh, all the things that Schiller's were saying, God, that's an actor, it was the truth. Actually, John, John Hume, I can't remember the woman's name, but John Hume told the story about, well, call her Annie. Uh, she, she impersonated about five times. And the, you know the impersonation officer. Wait a minute, I've seen that woman before. So I st officer stop her, and they stopped her. And of course, it was her own vote that time. <laughs> oh, tough one, tough one. Anyway, I mean, I've been worried about slanty care. Maybe right, you, go on, go for well, it. Go you, on. you tell me about it now because it's slanty care is so commendable because it's doing the yeah. wonderful thing that I think the Irish government, the Southern government, should be doing is trying to set up a decent health care. You know, which yeah. we're free in the point of basic, basic, I do, you know, know someone I, I think slanty care is really right. Here, here's the short story, shortcut. It's as basically the Irish NHS. That's really right. what they're trying to sell. And that's what they're aiming right. for. That, that's but, right. But, uh, you know, uh, care for all, free care for all right. at the point of delivery. Right. Uh, what the hell's so, going on? Uh, the guys are dropping out. Uh, right, right, on the board. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, that's, uh, Jude, if I could answer that question, uh, you know, I'd be on a big salary. Basically, what seems to be the I wrote it down, but by the way, somewhere the professor, uh, yeah, Professor Tom Keane, the chairman, he yeah. resigned, and uh, Laura McGahey, who was the executive director, she also resigned, and Professor Anthony uh, uh, Connors, as far as I remember, that was his name as well, he resigned. Basically, the whole idea was they were going to uh, set this up. They were going uh, the, the government, the, uh, the NHS, or not the NHS, HSE, Health Secretary, Executive, which is currently yeah. the body in charge. It is one size for all, and from the north of Donegal down to the south of Kerry, there's this one board, and it, should, it doesn't work. So they were going to set up this HSE, or not HSE, the uh, Sanity Care, and they were going to supposed to devolve power to local right. budgets, right. depending on deprivation and mm. you know population demographics and so on, yeah. and, and so on, so on. So on, nothing's happening. Uh, and they reckon, no, I don't know, I can't stand over this, but they are saying there could be vested interest, making sure that it doesn't happen, and, you know, political vested interest, and so on, people oh, get well, I wonder who they. I wonder who they are, or, or what, and well, what they... Well, they, they said the civil servants have been less than helpful in trying to get this up and running, and, you know, to, the, uh, let's be honest, uh, some of the medical people in the Republic of Ireland, the lobby groups are quite, uh, they, I, I don't know, I can't stand over it, but bottom line, dude, it's it's uh, it's snail paste, and these people are have had enough. Dude, these are these are the top people. These are very honourable yeah. people. Uh, well, they've, they've actually sa uh, said, right, we're not yeah. going to be party to what's going on here. I right, well, I mean, the, in other words, to put it in a nutshell, it would appear to be vested interests. Yeah, and they're keen on not having change, on not not yeah. having a decent health service. Right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. So, so who are these, or where are these? Or what, well, here, here's the here's point. One of, one, of the, one of the main things would be that public hospitals would only be available for public patients. Oh, Up right. until now, that uh, the, a lot of consultants have been able to use public wards for mm. private patients, mm. and the insurance companies are making money on it. These consultants are making money on it. Mm. A lot of consultants were making a hell of a lot more money at, at private practice. And they, mm. no, these are publicly employed consultants, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then they had private practice as well. They're riding two horses. To, uh, uh, and it's been very lucrative and i uh, would presume that is the source of much of what this yeah. you know uh, vested interest yeah. is about well, now, well, i am um, open to correction that but yeah that's, that's I, I wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't doubt it pat they so somebody mentioned the setting up of the nhs in the 40s 1940s yeah. and they said that um um whoever it was um an iron bevan uh had a hell of a job because there was several very very strong vested interests yeah. who were opposed to the nhs but he managed to push it past them. Now, if he could do that after an impoverished Britain emerged from the war, why yeah. would the south of Ireland with, uh, you know, an economy that's looking like it's going to be roaring ahead again, uh, yeah. why could they not take these people on and, um, you know, point out to the public, these, here's the block, here's the obstacle. These are the yeah. people of the obstacle. These are the guys who are making money in this. So yeah. should we allow them to do that? You know, they no. should have the courage to come out and say that. Yeah, Liam Dorn, who's a former nursing INTO. I saw him on TV last yeah. night. Yeah, he's a very good guy. And he says he was disappointed, but not surprised. Apparently, Stephen Donnelly, the health minister, is now going to restructure. Uh, Jude, I would like I, I would like to know exactly what restructuring means. And are, are they going to take in people that reflect? Uh, it could be this government's uh, ideological position as well. Know that they like this idea of two-tier uh, health system, and it, suddenly this restructuring could reflect more uh, more the marketplace. You know the old Thatcherism thing. I don't no, know, Jude. I really don't. Well, know. then, well, then you know, Liam Dorn or or Sinn Fein or whoever would be in favour of a decent health system and a proper slant of care. Uh, they should be calling out these people who are providing the blockage. You know, Sinn Fein should be getting up and saying the reason we're not getting forward or the reason this. Uh, committee has got people residing left, right, and center is because there are vested interests who will not yield on this. And we're talking about, mm -hmm. and they should say it. I mean, yeah, well, Joe, nobody, I've, 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 I've had to ask you, Pat, I had to ask you yeah. just now, and I read the papers carefully in this. I've had to ask you, where is the blockage coming? When those guys resigned, they didn't even mm -hmm. say why they were. No, they didn't know, Jen. And you see, that's, that's where people like me and you, like, Jen, uh, like, I don't have access to their private files. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, who's stopping you? Who, who, what's why has it gone? But Jude, the, the, they said they are nowhere near where they should be to setting up slanted care. By the way, Jude, the one final point I want to make the whole idea, apparently, of slanted care at one stage was in the event of unity. One of the big things that would people yeah. you know, in the unionist population would say, look, the NHS, this mm -hmm. was the South's idea of putting. Now, Jude, does that have something to do with it? I don't know. Oh, well, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, yeah. uh, well, I imagine the same people who don't want change in the medical system would be the, the same people who wouldn't want change in the uh, 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 political, political system. system. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or the constitutional position. Well, the last question, Pat, just related to, um, tail end question, related to Slauncher Care. Are, am I right or wrong in believing that uh, children under 12 are able to visit their GP without being charged? Or not? I think so. Well, they're definitely under six. And I think that was extended recently. Jude, and my children are no longer under 12, so I've never had the case uh, to use it. Uh, but but they, they, they definitely all under six went free. And mm. then I think they were trying to uh, up to under 12. Now, whether that is under was introduced is up uh, to debate, but uh, that was the plan. But the yeah. whole thing, Jude, was supposed to be rolled out. Slanchic care then was supposed to be, you know, free at the point of delivery for mm. everyone and mm. all, pu all public hospitals only for public patients. And mm. like, if you want to go to the Black Dark Clinic, you pay for it, but you're not part of this, the, the public system. Yeah, well, as maybe it's like private schools, you need, you need to get rid of them in order to have a properly functioning education, education system, system and likewise yeah. with uh, health. Okay, Pat, that's very sort of serious stuff. I, you, I'm sure you have a wee joke or a riddle or something you're going to ask me, are you know? No, I, no, no, you know what I started doing, Jude? I started reading this book called Peril. Oh, oh, <laughs> God. Is that, is that I know, face I, I see? I recognize that face on the cover. I, I've got this one. 
Joy of Man's Desiring. I haven't a clue what it's about, but I, I just said it. I'm going to read two books. I'm going to try and give up uh, a bit of uh, social media and start reading again. Because social media is just, it's chewing oh, for the fingers. You, it's, you, you, it's too easy, you know. It's it's like it's like fast food. All of, Not even fast food. It's like eating, you know, nibblers that you got at a cocktail party. Uh, uh, it's, it's just like too easy. them all the time. Uh, and you're totally dissatisfying, and yet they're compulsive. You want to keep on eating. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, okay, Pat. Okay, Jude. Thanks Catch you later. Bye-bye.